Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. I'm, it's uh, twelve oh two, so we're going to get started. We've got a one hour time window. I'm, I'm Mark Hopkins. I'm the relatively new executive director of Chicago Central Area Committee. Thank you very much for joining us today. You'll see with us is Dr. Suzette McKinney, uh, most recently of our friends at Sterling Bay Development. And you'll see Mark Kelly on the left uh, is commissioner of the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, better known as DKs to most of us. Um, I'm going to be turning over the MC duties to uh, Dr. McKinney and thank you very much for participating today and thank you all for being here. I'm gonna be watching for more participants as we, as we go along. So I'm gonna mute now and I'm gonna turn it over to Suzette and I am ready with PowerPoint when that's ready for you, uh, Mark. Great. Thank you. You know, you can go ahead and put up the first slide of the PowerPoint while I introduce Commissioner Very Kelly. Good. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to have you all join us today for our September monthly meeting. We are very excited to have Commissioner Mark Kelly join us today. Um, Commissioner Kelly, is this going to be your last speaking engagement before your big retirement? No, I have several more. Uh, <laughs> but it's one of it's one of it's it's sort of getting ready to close the uh, this chapter. Well, that's fantastic. We are again, as I said, super excited to have you with us today. So why don't I just go ahead and turn it over to you to get started? I know Mark is trying to get your working on the slides. <laughs> I mean, um, but while the slides are coming up, I would just remind everyone, um, as in our monthly meeting since we've been conducting them virtually. I would just remind you that if you have any questions that you'd like to pose to Commissioner Kelly during the Q&A portion of our meeting today, please just post your questions in the chat and I will grab them from there when we move to the facilitated discussion portion of today's meeting. So again, as I said uh, a few moments ago, we're very excited today to have Commissioner Mark Kelly join us. He is the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. Um, I'm excited to hear Commissioner Kelly's talk today because DCASE always has something exciting going on and also interested to hear, uh, Commissioner Kelly, if you plan to cover it, how DCASE pivoted during COVID to you know, help uh, continue to bring amazing events to the residents of Chicago, as well as our visitors. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Suzette. Uh, thank you, Mark. And it's, it's my pleasure to join the Chicago Central Area Committee. Um, I had the pleasure of working with you on a number of projects as we were um, working to come out of the pandemic and reopen the city. So it, it's, it's great to be here today. Uh, I, I have a about a 20 minute presentation and then I hope uh, to engage you in a conversation. Sort of the thesis I'm presenting today is, well, first of all, we all know what an amazing and important central district we have in Chicago filled with vibrancy, corporate headquarters, centers of law and, and medicine and advertising and, and business and uh, of, of universities and the list goes on, filled with hotels and restaurants and uh, surely one of the most important central districts, not just in this country, but, uh, but around the world. But it's also uh, one of the greatest arts districts in, in the country. And, and I, I believe that the role of culture and arts in the central district is, is Though it, it may be recognized, it has not been leveraged in a way that could better uh, benefit not just the cultural landscape, but also the central district itself. So that's that's sort of the idea I, I, I want to explore. And, and in doing that, let's, uh, Mark, if we could move to the next slide. Um, first thing, I, I just want to talk about this concept of Chicago as one of the great uh, cultural capitals on the globe. And, and I say that not, I, I don't believe that there's, there's any boosterism in that. I, I believe that is actually the case, that we are equal in the cultural vibrancy of this city to London and Paris and New York and LA uh, and all the other great cultural capitals. And, and the evidence is all around us. I, I, you know, right now we're in the year of Chicago music 
um, and and we're we're helping to remind ourselves and the world that we are that great music capital. Uh, imagine how many cities can say that the birthplace of such important genres is is jazz and blues and house and gospel. Um, we, we, I believe, have probably the greatest collection of authentic clubs owned by passionate lovers of music and not by uh, sort of conglomerates. Um, surely compared to New York or LA and even compared to um, New Orleans, uh, that is true. We have a dizzying array of, of festivals. Like there, right now, that, you know, whether it's Riot Fest coming up this weekend, whether it was Pitchfork last weekend, whether it was ARC, whether it's the Air Taxi coming up, which is about experimental music, and the list just keeps going on and on. I, I don't know another city with such a rich uh, array of festivals during our, our summer and fall months. And of, of course, the Millennium Park, which we uh, manage. And then uh, speaking of music, Chicago's strength as a music capital is because we have a multiplicity of sounds. It's not one sound like Memphis or New Orleans or Nashville, but rather it's, it is gospel and it's classical and it's hip hop and it's experimental and it's pop and it's cabaret and, and, and the list goes on. And then you think of theater. Um, so we, we have the largest nonprofit theater ecosystem in the world. And I want you to reflect on that for a moment. The largest nonprofit uh, ecosystem, surely London and New York in, in the commercial uh, arena um, are, are far larger than Chicago, but no city has 250 Chicago theaters. And so this is a place of experimentation. This is, Chicago is where new work um, comes forward. This is the birthplace of storefront theater, of, of improv, and uh, it's just an incredible uh, scene. And dance, uh, you know, the story, the individuals in the history of modern contemporary dance, Catherine Dunham and Ruth Page, uh, new, new, new dance forms have come out of Chicago, most recently footwork, which is uh, a dance form coming out of the South and West Side, the sidewalks, the streets of the South and West Side and informs uh, uh, dance of, of the world and think of all the great uh, dance companies that reside in Chicago and, and it's remarkable as few cities can say Joffrey and Giordano and Hubbard and Deeply Rooted and Ensemble Espanol, uh, the, but the list goes on. In architecture, it's no secret that every skyscape, skyscraper in the world carries the DNA of Chicago and, and whether it's Burnham and Sullivan and Frank Lloyd Wright and Mies van der Rohe, whether it's in the moment and it's SOM and it's Genie Gang and the list goes on. The Chicago Architectural Biennial just launching uh, today uh, speaks to our architectural legacy. Our collection of museums, again, um, few cities in, 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 in this country can have the uh, array of, of great institutions, of specialized institutions, small institutions. It's not just the Art Institute in the Museums of Science and Industry and the MCA. It's also the Sabo, the National Museum of Mexican Art. The list goes on. Probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest collections of public art in the world. So what think of what lives in, in this central district of with Cloudgate and the Calder and the Picasso. But think of how uh, public art has evolved in the city, whether it's the Wabash Arts Quarter in the South Loop, whether it's murals um, uh, around the city, that, that art in, in a public way is, is, is part of the Chicago experience and it's something um, to celebrate. The uh, public spaces that we have in the city, because I think of that as the art, part of the arts landscape. So our motto, Herbs and Horto, a city in a garden. And just to remind ourselves again, the lakefront of Chicago does not exist in the same way in any large city on the globe. And then it's Millennium Park and Maggie Daly and the Riverwalk and the Boulevard system and the great public parks and how that, especially how it plays with our, 
our public art and, and creates a, a, a sense that is unique to Chicago. But then it's in all kinds of other artistic disciplines, poetry and literature with Gwendolyn Brooks and Studs Turkle and Saul Bellow and Lorraine Hainsbury, the, the, the home of the Poetry Foundation. Uh, in media, um, I, I hope everyone understands how quickly Chicago is re-emerging is one of the great uh, media centers uh, in, in, in this country. Uh, Cinespace is now building 21 new sound stages. I believe it's 39 that are already in operation. Uh, there's uh, plans, uh, Common and his people are planning uh, new sound stages on the south side. Uh, we have 15 television uh, productions going on right now in Chicago and over 15,000 uh, people working uh, in the film industry. And it's also the most diverse uh, production industry in the country with about 50% of the crews in Chicago are, e are either BIPOC or, or female, which is it enough? No, but compared to any other city, believe me, it's off the charts. Um, we're a center of design. In fact, we're such a center of design that the Chicago style was the genius was it of it was it's, it was everywhere and then it was all distinctly different that the Chicago style is to embrace all styles and um, how important that has been. So all you put that all together, um, this vibrant scene and, and how it is important to the city, but um, and in fact, I, I want to then, uh, if we could go to the next slide, uh, give you a sense of how that plays out it, in particular in, in the central district. So um, the Chicago Loop Alliance did its first ever a survey of, of the economic impact of the arts on, and this, this was specific to the loop. So you have to extend that if you will, if you were to move into the central district, but just in the loop alone, $2.25 billion in economic activity, $90 million uh, spent on tickets and the loop. And by the way, more tickets are sold to arts events in the loop than to all of our sports events combined. So you take the Hawks and the Bulls and the Bears and the Sox and the Cubs, and they do not equal the ticket sales to arts. Uh, we, we, we're, we're, we're we're known for who we are, the number one big city for two years by Condé Nast uh, Traveler. Um, the, another study, three billion in direct economic impact for the nonprofit arts and culture organization citywide. In, in the loop, there are 250 cultural assets and that's both public art, that's the Harris Theater, that's the Auditorium Theater, that's the Chicago Theater and Broadway in Chicago and, and the list goes on. And uh, 58 million uh, tourists coming to Chicago. We were setting record upon record each year. And by the way, you should know in that, that game has been all in leisure tourism. Um, our our uh, economy supported by conventions has been flat for over a decade. Um, lots of competition uh, in, in this new world we live in. Um, there's one could question whether we're, we're we, we it's it's realistic to expect any great growth in that area. In leisure travel, I think there is the opportunity to just continue to build on it, driven by uh, the arts. So another way of thinking about this is the Loop Arts District is the most vibrant arts district in the country outside of Times Square. And in fact, no other city outside of Times Square even comes close to Chicago. Obviously Times Square exceeds Chicago, but then any other city after that um, pales in comparison with the economic numbers that we see here. Um, there's about 115,000 full-time jobs that are generated by the, the arts and culture landscape in the central district. And um, without question, the, the comeback of the city, arts and culture will be, will be central to it. So I say all that, and let's go to the next slide. What's, what's not to love about arts and culture? And, and it, it, it sounds like it's all a, a good news story, but, but, I, but I would argue 
everything I just said about us being uh, uh, one of the great cultural capitals in the world, all the economic activity that supports uh, the, the value of that to the central district and to the city, our, our conundrum is that we have historically failed to fully recognize, support, and celebrate our cultural economy. And as uh, you, everyone on, on this, this presentation today, I, I, th I think it's a challenge to our central district business community to be thinking about that as they, as you think about the challenges of the central district, how do you leverage the strength of the arts to make the central district stronger? How do we bring in more tourism? Um, and, and so I, 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 I say that we have, since Chicago has historically failed and, and, and I, I wanted to explore that idea just a little more. So first of all, let's, let's talk about music. I talked about what a great music capital we are, but the fact is in studies of music cities in this country and where millennials will go to hear music, Chicago in a recent study did not show up even in the top 10. We have failed to capture the imagination of the world about Chicago as a music uh, bucket city. Theater, um, visitors and, and surveys, when they come to Chicago, look at anyone going to New York knows, I need to go to theater if I'm gonna experience New York. But few travelers coming to Chicago have an understanding of what's here and what's available to them. And by the way, and it's also at an affordable price. Um, historically, governmental support for the arts has, has been um, modest, it's best. Um, there's some big changes there that I'll talk to in, in a moment. There's been overall lack of branding and recognition. We, we have let ourselves be sort of viewed as a meat and potato city, if you will, uh, uh, a deep dish pizza city when we're this, this complex, dynamic, ever-changing cultural space. And that would be true even in, in our restaurants, but somehow we're still not seen for who, who we are. A big issue in all of this, a driver of why the city is not capitalized, I would argue on its, its, its creative landscape is racism and segregation. So much of what I talked about, about the, the creative output of this city has come from underrepresented communities, minority communities from the South and West side and the city has literally, it's the systemic racism of the city has failed to then see what's in front of it, to value it, and then to leverage it and push it forward. Uh, but then I wanna close with just a couple of thoughts because big changes are, are afoot and D case is, is playing a leadership role. Uh, our mayor is playing uh, a leadership role. So first of all, there was a, uh, uh, a mayoral announcement about three months ago, Art 77. And Art 77 um, was coming out of the pandemic, talking of a $60 million, an unprecedented $60 million investment in arts and culture going forward from the city. And at the heart of that equation is where, where did the 60 million come from? D case has pivoted from being uh, one agency representing the arts to rather looking to all of the city agencies and all of the city to embrace the arts and support the arts. So um, for example, um, for the first time, public art is now considered part of city infrastructure and the recent capital bond that the city passed um, now has public art embedded in it. So we in D case, will be bringing $15 million of public art with a focus on the South and West side. Those are unprecedented numbers. Our, our budget historically has been a couple of hundred thousand. Uh, right now, uh, the international terminal is, is being um, massively refreshed. Uh, but what's also being brought into it, if any of you can think about as you got off a plane from international travel and went through that, that really soul, soul sucking labyrinth, right? You just, this gray, gray hallway that went on forever. Um, and, and the art in it was, was, was just not representative of a, a great visual arts city. We are now working in partnership with aviation and 3.5 million, we're bringing the best Chicago artists forward in, 
in, in a year, as you go through that labyrinth, now the, the joys and power of Chicago's artist will be on display and at, at the highest um, order. We, we are working now with the Chicago Park District and the Chicago Public Library because they're also art presenters. We're on a new initiative called Culture in My Neighborhood where we're literally bringing $30 million in investment to the cultural centers uh, living in the iconic buildings largely on the south and west side. Think the South Shore Cultural Center in the Pullman Cultural Center and the Humboldt Park Cultural Center beautiful facilities, but their, their auditoriums and their cultural spaces literally haven't been touched in sometimes a century. And we're bringing major capital investment to them, major investment of programming to bring these uh, spaces to life. Uh, we have a new partnership with Choose Chicago to get at the branding issue. So uh, we have the first ever music uh, brand for Chicago, music in the key of Chicago, and you'll start seeing it in the airports. You'll start seeing all of our music community embracing that language and pushing it out to become the language of, of all of us. Uh, we uh, have assembled uh, as part of that 60 million, um, $14 million in cultural investment in neighborhoods this year. By the way, that cultural investment two years ago, pre-pandemic was $4 million. So we have new programs, Chicago Presents and Neighborhood Access Program. This last weekend, I was at Soul City, a blues uh, showcase on Chicago Avenue in Austin. And I was in uh, South Shore at Rainbow Beach for uh, a summer dance uh, house party. And so new events that didn't exist before, but at the same time, we're also powerfully animating Millennium Park in the Central District. Uh, tonight, I hope some of you will join me where the Rocky Horror Picture Show will be um, the film tonight. And we're hoping to have the largest crowd in the history of that, that story uh, uh, film. On, on Thursday, we have Grammy winners coming from Chicago per performing everyone from uh, Jamila Woods to the Eighth Blackbird and the list goes on and, and we close our, our Millennium Park season with a blue showcase on, on um, Saturday. The, the last thing I wanna say is one of the other big ideas we're bringing to this, there's, there's been sort of this uh, tension point of the neighborhoods in the central district. And some would say we need more in the neighborhoods and as if what's happening in the central district is not to be valued. I would argue we need the central district, the neighborhoods to speak to each other. And so in all of our programming, whether it's taste, whether it's summer dance, whether it's the jazz fest, we're no longer programming in Millennium Park or just programming the neighborhood. Rather, we're putting together initiatives that bring programming to the neighborhoods and then bring people together in, in um, in, in a larger way in, in, in Millennium Park. Um, the last thing is it, 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 uh, we're also trying to push all of the public life of the city to think of itself in a more artful way. Our parades have not been very artful. Um, parading is an art form, but it's been largely lost in the city. Uh, we'll have the Arts in the Dark Halloween Parade on State Street on October 30th, it's one of my babies but it'll help us understand how powerful the arts can be to help us see and play and come together. But we're gonna be calling on our festivals and, and all of our public cultural life to, to, to be more thoughtful, purposeful, and if you will, artful in, in how they bring this all together. But I wanna bring us back to the, the equation in front of us. The, the, Chicago is a world music capital. We have one of the most important central districts um, in, in this country and, and on the globe. Uh, it is one of the, we have a thriving arts district within the central district, but all of those equations have not come together in a bigger way that makes leisure tourism a, ever more a driving force within the central district. Arts and culture is felt and it, and it plays in the central district. And, and all of it just strengthens the economic activity of, of uh, the city. And so with that, uh, I wanted to open this up for a conversation, Suzette. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Wow, so much information and statistics that even I, as a longtime Chicagoan, never knew. So very, very helpful information. I would just remind our members, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat and I will uh, help to make sure Commissioner Kelly has your questions. But I think I'll start us off um, with a question about, you know, you were talk <clears throat> talking about the fact that many tourists and people from across the country, across the world don't really recognize Chicago as a hub for theater and the arts. So in your opinion, how do we begin to elevate the understanding of Chicago or the recognition of Chicago as a major hub for theater, for the arts, and the other rich you know, cultural outlets um, that we have here in Chicago? Well, it, it's, it's no one, um, there's no one solution to, to the question um, you raised. First of all, branding. Um, historically, Chicago has been very conservative about how it's presented itself to the world. And, and so I, I would say, historically, I've been very critical of true Chicago and it's, and it's, and it's the, uh, the uh, groups that, that sort of worked on cultural tourism historically, because I don't think they captured the authenticity of the Chicago cultural scene. I, I will tell you that there's a commitment today to do that. And so I, for, for the first time, I think there's a really deep partnership between DCASE and DCASE bringing in the cultural landscape and, and working with CHU. So this first ever uh, music brand, Music in the Key of Chicago is an example of that. Chicago in Tune is in place right now and it's, it's, it's putting a spotlight on the music life of the city. And that becomes an annual event where we put that spotlight on, on this. So that's, that's part of it. Part of it, I, I, I would argue our local businesses should be more thoughtful about how to leverage, whether it's a hotel, whether it's restaurants. I, I think more connectiveness and thinking about the arts and, and then how to leverage that within their business world is something that we need to see more of. Um, I think we saw a little of this. Um, the Chicago Loop Alliance had their um, Sundays on stage. And, and, and it was sort of a, a big jump forward to what CLA has traditionally done, but it's, it's been an absolute home run to activate the streets with arts and culture and, and just, you know, liveliness. And then it's, it's relationship to the retail, I think um, speaks to, to where we're headed. I think governmental funding is, is, is also key and, and um, by the way, the mayor will be announcing her new budget next Monday, and there will actually be, uh, it may, I would argue maybe a transformative moment for the arts because uh, DK's budget is going to be stronger than it's ever been to support the arts and, and the cultural scene. Um, part of it is just how we all think. I, I think there's that, you know, we talk about the second city syndrome, and that means so many different things to different people. But Chicago has 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 never leveraged what it has. It's never owned it, and 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 and, and all of us collectively bear a responsibility to make the arts more central to the life of the city. Absolutely. Well, I would actually agree with you on the branding front. And I think, you know, branding also starts here at home, right? So how do we also do a better job of branding, you know, the rich culture and other aspects of our cultural economy that exists in the neighborhoods to the central area and, and the rest of the city? I mean, to your point, how do we, um, get the central district and the neighborhoods to share and talk more around our cultural economy. So let, let, uh, let's, let's start with um, Jazz Fest. So, so we have one of the great jazz festivals of the world. And by the way, it brings in tens of thousands of, of, of tourists. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's in there in, in the cultural tourism um, landscape in a big way. But in historically, uh, 
Jazz Fest was only in Millennium Park. Um, and it was free and was glorious, but it inadvertently basically educated the audience to love the form when it was free. So part of it was, it's unusual that we have a free festival, but our clubs did not feel the weight of the festival. Um, our artists, um, though some of were on our stages, overall, it was not bringing more energy to the jazz landscape of the city. And then, by the way, so much of great Chicago jazz has come from the South and West Side, but tragically, there's few places where that music is represented. So we had a struggle with that. We, we can't, you can't have a great jazz festival in Chicago and not represent the South and West Side. So to be more thoughtful about a citywide festival that still is in Millennium Park, but it's now in the clubs, it's both free and ticketed. It involves the South and West Side. Um, and my hope is that this would be, this will become an ever stronger festival that, that is valued by restaurants, it's valued by hotels, that everyone's thinking about their place in it. Um, Another way of talking about this is, is I want you to think about this, Lollapalooza, wow, the economic activity that that brought to the city this year, for almost 400,000 people, our hotels were largely hit, right? Right. But I, I think it also speaks to the issue right in front of us, because in a way, Lollapalooza is, is like uh, they're aliens and they come with their spaceship and they land build up their stages and they have their event and they ignore the city and its cultural landscape. And we could say, well, that's on them, right? No, that's on us. We let them do it. We, the culture of the city, why do we let 400,000 people come? And, and actually only 5% of the artists book were from Chicago. Um, no recognition of the historical forms, gospel, blues and house. No, no thoughtfulness. If that spaceship were to have landed in New Orleans, mm -hmm. aliens would never have been allowed to get away with it. They were in Chicago. Now we're in conversation with Bala Bruza and, and I'm hopeful that that equation is gonna change, but Chicago has gotta be uh, more forceful in how it thinks about who's here and how they represent the city and how the, the city plays with the cultural life that's in front of it. Fantastic, thank you. So here's a question um, from the audience. How was D-Case involved in Invest Southwest? There seemed to be a lot of music, art, and other cultural amenities included in the local processes. We are all over Invest Southwest. Um, so we love the initiative. Uh, first of all, these are you know, communities we all recognize the lack of investment and that also is the lack of investment in the arts. So man, we, we have so many projects going forward. I'll give you one example. We have four artists in residence who we selected. It, it's a, um, we're seeing how this goes and then we hope to build on it. So in Austin, we took a, a, an Austin artist, hired her as an artist in residence, had her bring together all of the cultural assets of, of, of the uh, Austin area, connect them to the businesses, connected them to, to these new economic development um, projects that, that are going on. Again, back to, we just had Seoul City last weekend, so funding, uh, the, 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 there's, there's, a, there's a, the, the hope to create Chicago Avenue that has branded as Soul City. And basically they just had their first big event which was funded by D-Case. We had the blues, we had, you, you could, it, it was a festival setting. We had food trucks, you could purchase a beer. We had two stages and, and, and the, the community just loved it. And so we're doing that in, in Bronzeville. We're, we're doing that in Englewood. We're doing that in Auburn and Gresham, um, in Coleman, in, in Roseland. Um, we also have a lot of new uh, projects that are bringing uh, cultural funding. Um, so for example, the Neighborhood Access Program, it, it, it 
offers funding um, to neighborhoods that don't have cultural institutions within them. Because if we just give grants to cultural institutions, we immediately are, are, are sort of excluding a lot of the South and West Side. Right. But with new ideas about who is ineligible and how you apply and how you get access, we're about to announce a million dollars in cultural grants to neighborhoods that have never seen that sort of cultural investment. We've moved a lot of our, we took taste and moved branded taste to go and did uh, restaurant and, and cultural events on the South and West Side. Summer dance moved into the South and West Side. We did House City, we're doing House City across the city, the folks in the South West Side. And all of these we're trying to connect to other initiatives and, and developments that are ongoing. And then public art, we're bringing $15 million in new public art to the South and West Side for the next five years. That's fantastic. Well, I will tell you, I am from the South Side. I love this concept of house city um, all across the city, but you know, us South Siders really love our house music. So we are waiting with fingers crossed for the uh, chosen few DJs house picnic to return. Well, you know, we, we actually, they did return this year. Um, they, they canceled it, but then we, we partnered with them and at Kennedy King College, the first time Kennedy King ever used its, its athletic field for a cultural event. So That's I see amazing. Kennedy King as a cultural institution, but it historically has not acted like one, but with a relatively new president embracing this idea, we invited in the chosen few. Uh, we had a free event. You had a you show your vaccination card to get in. Um, but we also just had the house uh, event uh, in Millennium Park on Saturday. So again, breaking down that, that unnecessary division of neighborhoods in the Central District. That's phenomenal. Um, here's another question from the audience. So the COVID recovery roadmap partly called for cultural events to lead the way. How do you think we're doing so far? Uh, we're doing okay. So first of all, right now is it, we're in the year of Chicago music is Chicago in tune. And it's a month long celebration of Chicago music. And we have 570 events in the calendar. I've gone to about 30 of them. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of exhausted as we get to the last week of the festival, but we've sort of done what we said we were going to do. It's free and ticketed. Clubs have felt the love. We the festivals have, you know, I, I was at Pitchfork last weekend and it was basically sold out. And Riot Fest will be sold out this weekend. Our jazz clubs are 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 at it. Um, lots of love being given to the music world. I just came from a press conference this morning called Chicago Live Again. And, and this is an initiative celebrating the Chicago theater scene opening up this fall. So we're gonna be doing uh, a festival at, at Navy Pier with 50 free performances um, from the theater world as we celebrate that. So, you know, we're, we're doing well. It's, it's a tough world, uh, the, the, the these stages and these, especially theater companies have been dark for it's, we're starting to approach two years. Yeah. But I think it's also fair that they're feeling the love and um, there, there's a lot going on despite all the challenges we face as we continue to live in the pandemic. Sure. And you, you talked a little bit also about just the growth of the film industry here in Chicago with projects by Cinespace and then Commons Project down on the far south side. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the importance of the film industry to our local economy here? I don't think many people recognize just how much money um, can be infused into our local economy with a high concentration of film industry uh, outlets. Well, in 2019, pre-pandemic, uh, the film industry contributed about $600 million to the local economy. I will tell you right now, we are gonna put to shame those numbers because filming is at a record high. We, we uh, the Chicago Film Office is part of DCASE and we manage all the permitting and, and all the economic development and we've never seen anything like it. And I, I will tell you, major studios are all looking at Chicago as, as a, 
as a, a potential um, uh, new site. So I, I think we've only begun to see what's going to take place in Chicago. And, and think about it, uh, filming in Chicago can be equal to the value Michael Jordan brought to Chicago to the world, right? Michael Jordan, this iconic sports figure and the world fell in love with him. And then the benefits that that came, came to us in Chicago without question, right? Um, well, think of LA and New York and, and how all of the filmmaking taking place there, it just, you're, you're, you, you see, you see these cities through the films that you've been part of and, and you understand these cities through their films. I think that's gonna become more and more true for Chicago that filmmaking in Chicago will remake our image in the world because it, it's to, to the world, they're gonna see us through those films and the power of those films, whatever the subject matter is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it's just, again, 15 um, television uh, serial um, projects are underway. Like seven years ago, it was three. Wow. Um, several years ago, we had probably 3,000 uh, uh, em employed in film, and now it's over 15,000. Mm -hmm. uh, SAG AFTRA contracts, you know, a couple hundred 10 years ago. Uh, any actor, the equation was simple. If they wanted to make big bucks, they had to leave Chicago. The equation now is complicated. You want to make it? It's probably easier getting a SAG after a contract in Chicago than it is if you go to LA or New York. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, in DK's purview, what would you say is Chicago's biggest opportunity as well as our biggest challenge? They're sort of like one in the same. So, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the lever I, I think from, from an arts perspective, to better leverage, to better embrace and leverage the arts is, is one of the key equations the city faces to strengthen it going forward. I'm not going to say that's going to deal with the issue of violence, street violence in the city, but I will say that, that a vibrant arts landscape, an embrace of the arts, will make this city a better place. And it's central to its economic life. Tourists are gonna to come to Chicago because they can feel its vibrancy and they wanna be part of it. It's public art and it's museums and it's restaurants and it's clubs and theater. And, 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 and for all of that to happen, the business community of Chicago needs to see and value the arts as, as a key ingredient in its own work and figure out ways to bring it in, it, it, bring that arts into its work and, and think about how it leverages it for the benefit of both the business and the arts community. Sure. Well, Commissioner Kelly, earlier this summer, you announced that you plan to retire in the fall. So, um, you know, are there any plans that you have for retirement that you're willing to share with the group today? I mean, you've been such a critical component of Chicago's cultural landscape for so long. It's just hard to imagine that someone like you is actually going to retire. Well, so I'm, I'm going to step away from the fray, if you will. But I, I, I plan to be uh, this, this uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to be a consultant, but I'm going to be unpaid. I'm, I'm not going to do this for any monetary gain. I want to continue to be a friend to the arts and cultural landscape. I want to, I'll be in, involved in a lot of projects that, are, that I'm close to, whether it's art, art in the mark, whether it's arts in the dark, whether it's um, jazz on the south side of Chicago, arts on the south side of Chicago. Um, so I'm going to muck around, but it's going to be on my terms, not as many meetings. Um, a hell of a lot less meetings, but um, <laughs> I do hope to still bring some value to what I love. Well, that is fantastic. It's exciting to hear that you aren't going away necessarily, that you will still uh, be around to make a contribution to the cultural fabric of this city. So I certainly appreciate it. Um, looking at the chat, it doesn't appear that we have any more questions. Um, it's 1247, so that's about 13 minutes uh, early. 
but I will just pause for a quick moment so that uh, to say to our members that if anyone uh, has any pressing questions that you want to get out there to Commissioner Kelly, please go ahead and put those in the chat um, before we conclude today's program. Okay, here is what looks like one final question. Can you give us an idea of other of the openings of other venues? So any new venues coming up for opening that you're aware of and are able to share with us? Um, so the opening of our, our present venues or, or of new venues? So well, the question is worded new. Okay. Um, so new. Well, well, first of all, I'm, I, in a radius, uh, a huge new music club has opened up on um, just east of Pilsen. Uh, it can accommodate 3,500 people. I have not been there yet but it's enormous and, and it was to open two years ago, but obviously got waylaid, but, um, but you know, uh, what, what else is new out there? It's, it's not really the time of a lot of new because just of the economic conditions and all the theaters have, have been um, closed. But I will say this, I'm a, I, I feared that a lot of our music clubs, a lot of our theaters would not have come out of the pandemic. That mm -hmm. from what I can tell, almost everyone is coming back. All the music clubs have reopened. Um, the theaters are coming back. So new venues, uh, not so much, but the vibrancy and, and, and all, all that's out there in theater and music and dance and more, the museums, are, are, are largely back at it or about to open in the next month. That's great. And very encouraging news for the city, for the city's economy as well. Um, how exciting. Well, Commissioner Kelly, it has certainly been an honor and a privilege to talk to you today. On behalf of CCAC, thank you so much for uh, presenting to us for our September meeting. Um, it is right about 1250. So I think we can go ahead and give you 10 minutes back in your day uh, for the CCAC membership. Please ensure that you are looking out for our newsletter, which will be sent via email and will include a summary of Commissioner Kelly's talk today um, and all of the interesting information that he has provided to us about uh, the cultural fabric of our great city and also look out for an announcement regarding our October meeting. We hope to have that meeting in person, but stay tuned um, because we are monitoring what's happening here locally with COVID and the situation. So uh, more to come on that. And with that, I'll turn it back over to our executive director. Thank you very much, uh, Suzette. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kelly. It was a, I love the talk. We had an opportunity to talk before and uh, I had just met a couple from New York. I'd never met them before. They were here in Chicago for the very first time. And they were remarking about, how did I not know of all the things that go on in Chicago, the Art Institute, the Shedd Aquarium, all the concerts. And I said, wow, you, they lived in Manhattan. You know, it's not like they lived in you know, a place with no media. So uh, the, your talk is extraordinarily timely and kind of first person for me. I, I was going through all the things that they needed to do while they were here and they were amazed. So uh, I think we just need to do a better job as a city of telling everyone. It's a very Midwest thing not to brag or to talk about yourself. And I think Chicago has kind of done that for generations. So now it's time for us to tell people how wonderful Chicago is. I think that's, that's a big thing. So anyway, yes, that's that. Thank you so much to both of you. Our, our next meeting is uh, uh, Dr. McKinney said is uh, October 12th. We will be announcing the speaker shortly, we hope, and uh, and uh, we'll see you all there. Thank you very much. And again, the newsletter we changed timing a little bit comes out the beginning of the month instead of the end, but that's only a few days during this. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, all.